Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 23, verse 1, continuation of the Ezekiel series. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed. And there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola the elder and Aholabah her sister. And they were mine. And they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholabah. Now remember, Israel and Judah split. Samaria was the capital of northern Israel, and Jerusalem was the capital of southern Judah. And Ahola. Samaria played the harlot when she was mine, and she daughtered on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. Oh, isn't that interesting? The Assyrians uh, conquered northern Israel and Samaria. Verse 6, which were clothed with blue. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but blue is representative of the law, the laws of God, which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she dotted, with all their idols she defiled herself. Uh, just so you know, Ahab was one of the kings of that they're talking about here. So, with all their idols, idols, she defiled herself. Isn't that funny? They got a TV show called American Idol. Yeah. Verse 8. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt. No, she didn't leave her whoredoms in Egypt when she left. No. For in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Therefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, and into the hand of the Assyrians upon whom she doted. Oh, yeah. The Assyrians came, conquered them, and carried them away as slaves. Verse 10. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women. For they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister Aholabah saw this, you know, Jerusalem, she was more corrupt than her in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. You know, as bad as Samaria was, Jerusalem became even worse. Read Jeremiah 3.8 said that Israel had justified herself more than her wicked sister Judah. I'm kind of paraphrasing there, but uh, read Jeremiah 3. In this series, I've read it a couple times, so. Oh, boy. Verse 12. She doted 
upon the Assyrians her neighbors, captains and rulers clothed more gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way, and that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion. Got to look that word up. Uh, that word means to be dyed red. Not dead, but, uh, you know, tinted. Yeah. The images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion. So they were tinted red. Girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to, after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love. And they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. So the Lord became alienated not only from Israel, but also from Judah. Verse 19. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she dotted upon her paramours. Now, if you don't know what a paramour is, it's a lover or a mistress. Uh, somebody that you would woo, you know, like you're flirting with them. For she dotted upon her uh, their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Uh, boy, if you got kids, may I suggest you get them out of the room? Uh, you might want to pause right here for a second. Yeah. All right. So what does this mean? It means, uh, the male equipment is like, uh, the flesh of an ass, asses, you know, like a donkey and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Uh, they're talking about ejaculation when the man has an orgasm. But not a little bit, but like a horse. And a horse is, you know, half a ton. So how much? I mean, I've never seen a horse do anything. But uh, the Lord's using this as a figure of speech to call to remembrance, you know. So, yeah. That's what you call, well, I better not say it. Verse 21. Thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Therefore, O Aholabah, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side the Babylonians, and all the Chaldeans, Pekod, and Shoah, and Koah, and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords, and renowned, all of them riding upon horses. Verse 24, And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels, and an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield, 
and Helmet Roundabout. Yep, these people are well protected. You know, a buckler shield helmet, a helmet to protect their head, a shield to protect their uh, body, and a buckler. A buckler was a type of shield that was uh, often worn on the left arm so that if an arrow or a stone hit it, it would just bounce off. You know, because the right hand is where you got your sword if you're right-handed, and the left arm you're wearing your buckler to protect yourselves from, uh, you know, when the enemy throws a spear at you or, or arrow, you turn to the left, right? And it hits the buckler and bounces off. Which shall set against the buckler and shield and helmet roundabout. And I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. And I will set my jealousy against thee. And they shall deal furiously, furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. Wow. There were... Uh, sometimes they would cut off your ears and your nose. Verse 26. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them nor remember Egypt any more. You know, all the Babylonians were full of false stuff too. Just like Egypt and Assyria. Verse 28. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully. You know, this is, uh, this is coming true to Europe and the United States and Canada today and all the Western Union uh, nations. And they shall deal with thee hatefully and shall take away all thy labor and shall leave thee naked and bare and the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. What do you mean take away your labor? If you got fields of crops and a house, you're going to lose everything. No wonder they never read this stuff in church when I was attending church. But I read it. Verse 30. I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone a whoring. Because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. And because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. Remember when Jesus talked about, asked the Lord to take this cup from him? The cup is talking about judgment. So God's going to take the cup of judgment from northern Israel and give it to Judah. Verse 32. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup, deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness, and sorrow with the cup of astonishment and desolation with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out and thou shalt break the shards thereof and pluck off thine own breasts 
for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me, and cast me behind thy back. In other words, yeah, you know, forgot about the Lord and turned their back on him and walked away. Because thou hast forgotten me and cast me behind thy back, therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. The Lord said moreover unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Aholabah? Yea, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. They burned their sons alive, sacrificing unto Satan. Verse 38. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. I guess in the morning they sacrificed their children unto the devil, and then in the afternoon they went to the Lord's house. How that work for you, Judah? For when they had slain their children, for when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it, and lo, Thus have they done in the midst of mine house. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from afar, unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came, for whom thou didst wash thyself, painted thy eyes. You ever put, you know, hear about putting what mascara on the eyes? You know, they painted their eyes. Uh, put eyeliner on or whatever mascara or whatever you gals do they painted thy eyes and decked thyselves with ornaments yeah they put on fancy jewelry right and saddest upon a stately bed and a table pre prepared before it whereupon thou hast set mine incense and mine oil Yeah, they gave the things of the Lord unto these heathen aliens. Verse 42. And a voice of multitude being at ease was with her, and with the men of the common sort were brought Sabaeans from the wilderness. Uh, Sabaeans were uh, Arabs, if memory serves me correctly. Sabaeans from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, Will they now commit whoredoms with her, and she with them? Yet they went in unto her, as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. So went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholabah, the lewd woman. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses, and after the manner of women that shed blood, because they are adulteresses, and blood is in their hands. For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them, and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And the company shall stone them with stones, and dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you. And ye shall bear the sins of your idols. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. 
Oh boy. Doesn't sound like anything has changed in uh, two, three thousand years, does it? Nope. Sure doesn't. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.